So, Little Max Joel Haymaker, it's a pretty good move. It's it's only big problem is that it's it's really unsafe on shield, and you know you you don't get it back after being hit. But otherwise, it's a really solid move that has a deceptive amount of uses. You can do a lot of stuff with this thing, which is what I'm going to be going over today in this video. So there are just a couple general attributes to this move that you should keep in mind. I've mentioned it in my previous videos, but I may as well just remind you again if you haven't seen them. The grounded version has three instability frames that cover Little Mac's entire body on startup, and then 14 more frames that are just on the lower half of his body. Uh, but the aerial version has no invincibility frames at all. It goes over low hitting moves and some projectiles, but you, you probably already knew that. So the first variation that I'm going to talk about is Wave Maker. This is the most important one, and basically all the other advanced variations of Haymaker can't be done without knowing how to do this one. The Wave in Wave Maker is talking about wave bouncing. TLDR is where you start the Haymaker in the opposite direction and then turn it around within three frames of the startup. I'll link a more detailed video in the description on how to be reverse and wave bounce if you need more help with it. But doing this what the Haymaker does is make it hit closer than the normal fast Haymaker. Wave bouncing a long Haymaker isn't really worth it because the normal version of a Haymaker can travel the same distance a Wave Maker would, but in fewer frames. The most basic thing you can get out of the wave maker is a couple new combos. Reverse up tilt into wave maker is true at low to mid percents, and down throw to wave maker is another great combo. Wave makers can also make applying pressure to platforms easier. Mac usually has to space a little far away for a normal haymaker to land, but he can attack at even closer ranges using a wave maker. This can also be used for microspacing against projectiles. Timing the wave maker correctly will make it so you reach the move's peak height earlier so you can go over whatever projectile or move is being thrown out. The microspace can also be used to make the haymaker an even better anti-air. And if you parry a multi-hit, you can use the wave maker to weave away from the rest of the multi-hits coming out of that move and then hit them for it. So the next one I'm talking about is stage maker. This one's pretty simple. Running off and using a haymaker towards the ledge can intercept low recoveries and two frame them with the right timing. The stage maker is just using a wave maker to cover the ledge as opposed to a regular one. What this does is make the haymaker have seven more frames to cover the ledge, making two frames easier to pull off. The next one is a ledge maker. Ledge maker is generally used for two framing and trumping opponents at ledge, which can lead to all sorts of follow ups. It can also be stalled to cover certain get up options. So there are three setups for the ledge maker. The first one is you teeter at ledge and then you back roll, F tilt towards the center stage, and then do the full length haymaker. The next one is teeter at ledge to instant dash attack towards the stage into up smash. It's a little slower than the first one, but it keeps your dodge fresh and doesn't stale it out. And then the last one is rolling from ledge into jab two. But the thing is with this, you have to immediately use the haymaker after jab two. If you're gonna stall after setting up to wait for the right timing, just crouch. Staying in the idle animation will actually mess with the setup and not make the ledge maker work anymore. It's really weird. So the next one I'm talking about is Undermaker. The Undermaker serves a similar purpose to Stage Maker, but this time around it covers more horizontal recoveries to the ledge, as well as below the two framing area. It's basically a below outward facing ledge snap wave maker so I'll, let me explain while under the ledge you just wave maker back to the ledge what this does is have the initial haymaker before you wave bounce cover around the ledge and then the wave bounce snaps you back to it having an outward hitbox that snaps the ledge is pretty useful Unlike the stage maker, the fact that this is an outward facing hitbox means the opponent won't be able to wall tech it like they could against a stage maker you can set this up with a wall jump or by just jumping below the stage, but there are also ways that you can set up without using a double jump. You can just full hop off and then back air and then drift into it. You can short hop nair into down air and then drift into it. Or you can just drop from ledge and do it that way, but remember that you will lose invincibility when you snap back to the ledge. Expect the Undermaker to trade with any hitboxes or whatever move the opponent is using to recover with, so be ready to wall tech or recover from wherever you end up after the moves collide. So the last one I'm talking about is the Hit Lag Maker. 
This is a much more situational variation of the Haymaker, but it's still pretty useful. Using a Wavemaker while hanging on a ledge won't have you snap back to it after throwing a move out, but this will make it so you will snap back to ledge. The hit lag from Haymaker is 18 frames, so colliding with a hitbox will have you stay in the air for a little longer, which will make you snap to ledge. Hit lag Maker can safely deal with projectiles from the ledge and lingering moves used to edge guard you, or ledge trap you, or whatever. You can also use the late version of Haymaker, which can set up chasing situations, and it can also be used to cover ledge trump options like neutral get up and get up attack. So yeah, that's, that's all I had to talk about for this video. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it, but before you go, I have a quick question. I've had a couple people DM me and ask if I was planning on streaming, and the answer is yes I am. I'm just waiting on a bit more equipment to come through. Uh, and then I'll be able to start streaming. So throw it in the comments if, if if you want me to start streaming, and if you if you tune in every once in a while. And uh, yeah, that's about it. I'll talk to you guys later.